Hello. Just going to sit here and drink my coffee and talk with you a little bit about Transformers 1, which is actually pretty good. <laughs> was not expecting that. Well, I sort of kind of was by the time I went in to watch this early access screening, uh, Saturday, the 14th of September. I have to think about what day it is all the time. And I had been hearing some positive buzz. I will admit that this was a trailer that I did watch because I didn't care. I had no plans to watch this movie. The trailer doesn't really do it justice. Just have to say that. So try to forget the trailer when you go into it. I'm here to tell you that this was a refreshingly fun time. It's going to sound blasphemous to say this, but this movie is tons better than that 1980-something movie that's such a big deal to a lot of Transformers fans. I've only watched that movie for the first time a few years ago and hated it. It was so boring. It reminded me of My Conquest is the Sea of Stars, that anime I recently saw that bored the absolute hell out of me. The Transformers movie, I think it was what, 86, 87, something like that. Oh my, I could not wait for it to be over. Hated every second of it. Just nothing but flying around, fighting, no character development, couldn't get emotionally connected with anyone. I just didn't care. A bunch of nonstop music and laser firing and battles and oh my gosh, I couldn't. This movie is not like that at all. This movie actually has a normal storyline arc. It's got the beginning with the introduction of the characters, then the twist that sets everything, or, you know, the, the, the turn that sets everything into motion, and then the final act, when everything comes to this culmination and there's the ending. Now, this movie is basically the origin story of the Transformers that we know, the origin story of Optimus Prime, Megatron, Starscream, Bumblebee, that sort of thing. It has a pretty extensive list of well-known actors in the voice cast. Chris Hemsworth plays Optimus Prime, Brian Tyree Henry plays Megatron, Scarlett Johansson plays, oh gosh, Alita, Keegan-Michael Key is basically the early version of Bumblebee. John Hamm plays, oh gosh, something prime. I forgot that character's name, shoot. Oh, that bugs me, but whatever. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne plays some older Transformer that they meet, and Steve Buscemi plays Starscream. And it's basically showing Optimus Prime, Megatron, Alita, Bumblebee, before they became known as transformers like before they could transform because they are miners they just work in the mines they're lowly nothings basically in in the grand scheme or the grand hierarchy they can't transform and chris hemsworth is kind of like this spunky independently minded character he wants to better himself basically he doesn't want to be a miner his whole life and he and megatron are friends chris hemsworth has this great idea to enter them in this race get them noticed by Oh, John Hamm's character. What the heck is his name? I mean, it was repeated often enough. You'd think I would remember, but no, I completely forgot. Anyway, they do get noticed, but then things happen and they end up being thrust into this world they're not familiar with, a world they've only heard about. And they find out things that basically shatter their reality. And you see very clearly in this story where Megatron and Optimus began to take their separate paths because in this movie, they are friends. Did I mention that already? Maybe I did, whatever. They're friends. The trailer lets you know that they were friends and you see what happened along the way to turn them into enemies. And the really cool thing about this story is that their transformation into the characters that we know them as makes sense. The writing to me was pretty doggone solid. The pacing was good. It's about an hour and 44 minutes long. I wasn't bored at all. I really had fun with this film and and that I'm, I'm still kind of in awe of that. I'm very happy that this was uh, yet another positive movie experience. There was some humor in here that was 
legit laugh out loud humor. I laughed out loud myself multiple times. Many people in the crowd did. The crowd was comprised of a lot of kids, but also a lot of adults. And there was applause at the end of the movie because it was pretty solid, you guys. No agenda, nothing, no silliness written into the story. No, just a, a fun dog on time and an interesting journey with these characters, seeing how they transform, no pun intended, but how their internal beings transform into these well-established characters. The dialogue was funny. There was some slapsticky humor. Bumblebee, <laughs> voiced by Keegan-Michael Key, was freaking hilarious. He was probably... <laughs> He was probably the best thing about this movie. Oh my gosh, he's so funny. I mean, it's worth watching just for him, honestly. And at the very end of the movie, the credits start a little bit, and then there's this tiny scene not long after the credits start. So I can't, it's kind of hard to call it even a mid credit scene, but stick around for that because it's really funny. Yeah, there was a lot of laughter, but the laughter wasn't necessarily caused by goofy situations or let's say slapsticky stuff that was too silly. Um, the humor seemed to fit and yet it could also turn very efficiently into something that was pretty serious. There are some kind of dark moments in here, not necessarily anything that's, let's say, PG-13 worthy or, well, I don't know what this thing is rated, but it's definitely not some, anything that's rated R. But dark as in, you know, there are some moments of violence um, that you do see a, at least one Transformer being ripped in half. Of course, it's a Transformer, but whatever to a kid, this might, mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But it doesn't shy away from some of the darker or let's say more serious themes and yet at the same time it's able to weave the humor into it in such a way that it doesn't come across as cheap and silly and slapsticky and goofy and stupid nothing like that chris hemsworth in the role of optimus prime i think he had said in an article that he wasn't going to mimic peter cullen's voice and there's not necessarily any mimicry going on that you can pick up on but i definitely noticed an attempt on his part to at least match the the way Optimus talked or the, the, the bass in the voice or like he starts off because this is him as a younger character and also Megatron, their voices are much different in the beginning, especially they're a little bit higher, not quite as deep, you know, in, in that vocal, that deep vocal range of, let's say, someone like Peter Cullen. As the story goes on, you can hear or at least I could pick up on little elements of what sounded like Peter Cullen's style woven into the voice of Optimus. By the end, now Peter Cullen is not credited as being a voice in here, but at the very end, by the time Optimus Prime is fully Optimus Prime, you can hear like this undercurrent or this attached undertone of Peter Cullen's voice. That was either maybe digitally done or it was a line taken from a previous movie or show he's been in and they just had Chris Hemsworth's voice kind of melded in with it. It works very well. The transformation of his, no pun intended you guys, but the way his voice evolves makes complete sense. and. I feel like he did justice to the character. All of the voice acting was very good and I enjoyed this a lot. Again, I did not expect to. I think that this is going to be something that's going to be pretty positively received by fans and moviegoers. I do recommend this on the big screen. It's just more fun on the big screen. And if you're a Transformers fan, I would urge you not to be too put off on watching this based on the trailer alone, or not to be too put off on watching it because Peter Cullen's not around. I still think this is a solid entry. I decided I didn't want to get heavily into the plot. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up, kind of a short review again, but I liked it enough that I wanted to talk about it and share my thoughts with you guys. So if you get a chance to watch it, let me know what you think. I'm curious if you receive it in the same way that I did, because I really, I, I mean, by the time, like I said, by the time I went in to see it, I had been hearing enough positive buzz that I felt like I would probably enjoy it, but I didn't expect to have as much fun with it as I did. So I wanted to let you guys know that. And that's all I have to say about Transformers 1. See you guys later. Bye.